everyone, sorry for the long video silence. Since our last video, I've given talks on my recent scientific paper in Copenhagen, Albany, Toronto, at NYU, and in Washington, DC. I've also applied for a lot of research jobs because my PhD is coming to an end, and I'm in the process of publishing my last thesis chapter on colliding galaxies. Luckily, the busiest part is over, and we're so excited to make many new videos for season two. If you have any topics you'd like to see on Space with Sarah, now is the time to comment below. Okay, enough rambling. Now I'll answer some more of your questions from season one. The first question is from Jim, who wants to know what my specialty is within astrophysics. Thanks for your question. This reminds me that I should dedicate a whole video to this topic soon. But for now, I'll leave you with a teaser. When we look out in the universe beyond our own Milky Way galaxy, we're limited to seeing single snapshots in time of galaxies because they're so far away. Looking farther away means looking at the universe at earlier times. Remember light has a finite travel speed? But it's still hard to figure out how galaxies grow because we can't see them change in real time. Galaxies are enormous collections of stars and gas connected in a web of dark matter that spans over our entire universe. And according to our current understanding, galaxies have built up their mass by colliding with and gobbling up smaller galaxies. Luckily, those events leave behind stellar structures and streams which persist for billions of years. From our understanding of gravity, the distribution and motion of these stellar structures allow us to work backwards in time and retrace where the stars were once located and investigate what affected them along their paths. In my research, I exploit that these structures leave behind clues from past interactions, and I use these structures to study the distribution of dark matter in our own galaxies and how galaxies build up their mass. This isn't exactly a perfect explanation, so I'll definitely elaborate on this in a full episode. The next question is from Rajiv, who always has great questions. Thanks for all your feedback and engagement throughout season one. Rajiv wants to know if we can colonize the moon or other places in the solar system. There's been a lot of discussion on building a moon base as a stepping stone to reach other more distant objects. Launching rockets from the moon would require much less fuel because it has a lower escape velocity due to its weaker surface gravity. If we could locally manufacture fuel on the moon, this might be a cheaper alternative to launch rocket to a potential Mars colony. A moon base is a lot different than a colony though. This has been the source of a lot of attention and several government and private plans to colonize Mars have been proposed. There are some challenges though, because Mars atmosphere is very thin. Mars has no magnetic field protecting the planet from ionizing radiation. The temperatures are not that pleasant. The surface gravity is a lot lower. We can't breathe the air and there doesn't seem to be a lot of liquid water. Despite this, there's nothing stopping us from building the technologies to overcome these challenges, terraform Mars, and send humans there. But it'll take a lot of money and new technology. Exciting times. While I really admire the human species for its curiosity, sense of exploration, and urge to push our boundaries, I must admit that Earth is pretty great compared to all alternatives in the solar system. So we should take very good care of our home while exploring. The last question is from Black Hole Universe, who is skeptical of the evidence of dark energy and of the accelerating expansion of space. In particular, he's asking about the data used, exploding stars, and he's mentioning that the exploding stars might just look dimmer due to their location in space and the conditions that surround them. First, a quick reminder. Type 1a supernovae have the same energy output when they explode, and because of this, they'll appear to be as bright as other type 1a's if they're at the same distance. This makes them great standard candles, meaning that if a type 1a explodes a little further away, it'll look dimmer depending on exactly that difference in distance. Two team of astronomers surveyed type 1a supernovae in galaxies more than a billion light years away, and both groups found that the type 1a's appeared dimmer than they were expected to. This means that the universe has expanded even more than expected since the light from these explosions were emitted, and that the universe is not only expanding, but that the expansion is happening faster and faster. The expansion of the universe is accelerating. 
Okay, back to the question, which asked if the dimness of the type 1As could have something to do with the surroundings and environment. And actually, this was very carefully tested by studying the spectra of the type 1As and finding that they look similar at all distances. Dust and other environmental effects would have led to differences in these spectra. So the dimness does not appear to be due to the variation in the host galaxies or the environment. Scientists are still trying to prove and disprove the results by studying the variabilities in these types of explosions. But so far, the acceleration in the universe remains robust. We also get the same conclusion about the acceleration of the expansion of space if we analyze the clustering of galaxies and the cosmic microwave background. For more information on the Type 1a supernovae and dark energy experiments, see the link to the Nobel Prize press release from 2011 below. Thanks again, everyone, for watching, supporting, wondering, questioning, and commenting during season one. We've been so overwhelmed by the support, and we can't wait for all the new collaborations coming up and for the season two to launch. Don't forget to click subscribe if you like our channel. Thanks for watching. <laughs> ah! One more time. You think we need to do it all a billion times again? <laughs> no! No, you can blackmail me forever. What do I want to say? Mm, I don't know. Thanks for watching. I'll just say that. Okay. Yeah, we won't see them too. Okay. <laughs>